Hey everyone, Techni here with a video talking about keyboard sizes and hopefully being able to help you out decide which sizes will suit your setup the best. And now there are many, many keyboard sizes out there down from 40% to 65% and all sorts of in between right there. But we're gonna focus on the three most popular sizes right here, the most common sizes at least, and that's your full size, your TKL, your 10 keyless, or your 60% over here. And I did detailed reviews on all these boards right here, so you can go check those out as well if you wanna see some more information on each board. But anyways, where I'd like to start off with is full size. And I would say this is probably the most common, right? You're gonna find this size keyboard, this layout in your workplace or any sort of establishment, right? Your most common keyboard that comes with, say, a pre-built PC or something like that. It's usually gonna be a full size. And how you can tell a keyboard is a full size keyboard right off the bat is you have the number pad over here. Again, you can see if we just cover up the numpad over there and then we have this, you have your TKL. So again, you have your numpad over here, which is again, really beneficial. I never use a numpad for gaming. I don't know if people do, um, but again, it's very beneficial again for work. The other really cool thing about full-size keyboards. Now this isn't in every single full-size keyboard, but I'd say in the majority of them, you usually have some extra features here. As you can see with this one, you have some media controls right up here and then a volume knob and stuff. A lot of full-size keyboards have that feature right there again you can find some that don't but again the majority of them do and it's really nice and convenient again having all this on a full-size keyboard here now I know the one thing that you guys are saying about the full-size keyboard man that thing is way too big I don't have that much space on my desk and yes it does take up a pretty decent footprint right there but let's talk about gaming which is probably what the majority of us are doing here right also me whenever I game with a full-size keyboard when I first started out my mouse would always hit the side of it but now I take my keyboard and I cock it to the side and I game like that. Now I don't cock it to the side just to save space. That's again how it's comfortable for me for gaming. And whenever I bring it to the side like that, push it off to the side, I have plenty of space for my mouse. But yes, bringing it back to that straight, if you game like this when it's straight on, yeah, I think the full size will get in your way. And again, I believe if you're really at it and you're playing a fast paced game, I think your mouse will end up crashing into the side of the keyboard, depending again, which DPI you use on your mouse. And a lot more goes into that. I play on a 400 DPI. So again, I'm kind of all over the place and really moving a lot. If you play on a low DPI, you really don't have to move that much. So it might work out for you. So kind of put a lot of that into play. How do you place your keyboard? What's your DPI setting on your mouse? Again, what's the size of your desk? How much room do you have on there? You know, again, with me cocking to the side and everything using a low DPI, it works out perfectly fine for me. And yes, the majority of the time, not always, but again, the majority of the time, a full-size keyboard does run a few bucks more than say a 10 keyless or a 60% right here. Again, depending on what kind of manufacturer and features are built within it. But between these three right here, this keyboard is the most expensive. All right, so now let's talk about the TKL or 10 keyless. And when I say 10 keyless, the only difference, again, references back to that full-size, is you're missing the number pad right over here. So it's really not much. Again, you kind of knock off a few inches right there, bring it to the nice compact size. But again, all you're missing is that number pad. Now on the K320 right here, you can see there's no media controls or anything. All the media controls are layered within your function layer here, which is plenty of fine and easy to use. But you can find many 10 keyless keyboards with media controls like you saw on the full size over here. But it does bring up quite a big of a lip on it. Like it's nice going from full size to 10 keyless because you kind of bring it into this nice, perfect, compact size. But again, you can find some that add this really big lip on the top and then implement some uh, media keys up there. So kind of look at a 10 keyless that way, right? Do you need the number pad? That's really the only difference right there. Do you need it, right? Me doing work and basic stuff, yes, I do need it, you know what I mean? But when you go to a 10 keyless, you can kind of look at it this way as well. For example, the K320, a fantastic keyboard right here, 100 bucks. This keyboard comes in at only 100 bucks. Buy yourself a little external 10 keyless keypad, right? You know what I mean? Just plug it in whenever you need it. Or even leave it plugged in and push it off to the side. They're usually pretty small, you know? So you're looking at maybe like, I don't know, say 120 or 110 bucks, something like that. Rather than talking about the full size over here, which this board's usually around 150 or 200 bucks, something like that. So you can kind of save your money and just, again, still save that space. And that's what I really love about 10 keyless keyboards. It's almost like that perfect world. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the ever so popular 60% gaming keyboard right here. And first off, let's be honest with each other. Why are 60% so popular right now? Yeah, they've been around for a while and people have been using them, but really started the hype of them is Fortnite, and especially Tfue with the Ducky 1 Too Many. 
not disrespected or anything like that, but let's just be honest with each other. That's what really sparked them up and really brought the hype out with them. But honestly, 60% keyboards are probably the least versatile and some of the hardest to use. Again, if you're using a 60% for your main everyday keyboard. I mean, as far as just using it for work, you gotta go into these layers. You usually got a function one and a function two. Some of them have a magic key and you go into multiple different layers for your arrows or your shortcuts and anything like that. Sometimes it's a function one, sometimes it's both functions in the key again for daily work and productivity like this is a 60% is a definite no-go so as far as me 60% I do keep it on my desk this keyboard always stays on my desk and I use it all the time when I game and that's where I put a 60% it's a gaming keyboard no way um, if I ran an office I would not have my associates use the 60% keyboard I said man you're just wasting time with all those shortcuts and everything you know what I mean and, and that's again where I put a 60% keyboard it's a gaming keyboard but yes it's a great gaming keyboard and like I stated I use this every day I play a lot of Call of Duty and I'm quite a fast-paced game player right there you know so I love the 60% I actually keep Keep the 60% in the full size on my desk as I stated before and what I do is I just move them and swap them out of place and I bring this one in front or that one in front pending if I'm gaming or something every now and then I game on the full size and it works perfectly fine but I'm so used to the 60% right here again just clearing some of that space but again that's where you kind of got to put it right there is it gonna justify that price because again they're coming in around 100 to 130 bucks talking about the prices of these two guys so if you can only get one keyboard Will a 60% suit you for that? So all in all, talking about each style keyboard here, the full size 10 keyless and then the 60%. Talking about my setup, like I do, I keep the full size on there and the 60%, right? Before when I just used my PC for gaming, I would have been fine just using the 60%. But now on my gaming PC, I do a little bit of work as far as shipment, uh, responding to comments and stuff like that. And that's where the full size really comes into play and very, very helpful. Again, on my main iMac, my work computer, all I use is a full size. But yes, I do know not everyone's gonna wanna buy two keyboards. You're talking three, 400 bucks worth of keyboards between the two, right? So that's where I put the perfect size keyboard is definitely a TKL right here. Again, you're gonna get it for a decent price. If you need that numpad, just buy it on the side. And that's honestly what I recommend everyone doing. Like if you're looking for that perfect keyboard, Go with the TKL. But hey, please do let me know down in the comments what's your favorite size keyboard or what size you have on your desk. Or heck, what sizes you have on your desk right there, you know? But again, please let me know why as well. Like, why is a 60% your favorite right there? Is it the space or is, again, just, I mean, be honest. Is it just the hype with them, you know what I mean? Do you use the full size because, again, it's for work? I'm just really curious and I'd love to have the conversation with you guys right down there. So please do let me know. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I hope I was able to help you out and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.